Sunday dealt with um, lady and not here, just totally, totally um, depressed and saddened about her life and so many things in it and and a very, um, uh, from the standpoint of the world, wouldn't have a problem in the world, but does. And then I got another call from out of state of another lady, um, believer, listened to some of the tapes. And there's just so many Christians that hurt. And what we're looking at is, you don't need to. But I want to begin tonight like I did, like I began last Wednesday evening. So if you listen to these on tapes, I'm going to say the same thing we did at the beginning. Everything we're going to study tonight and see tonight will be of no benefit to you if you don't believe it and live it. And they're just, they're, these are not just doctrines to, to be stored away. These are things that challenge who and what you are as far as the world is concerned. And who you really are as far as God is concerned. So you can take, make up your mind. Do you want to believe Satan's lie? And who and what you are? Or do you want to believe what God says? What Satan says or what God says? You believe what God, what Satan says and live under Satan's lie, you're headed for the stress and depression. You want to believe what God says? then you'll not experience it because I've come to the realization and I'm going to be bold and, and just very strong on this. Stress and depression is related when you and I live in the cosmic world, not in who we are in Christ. It's when we are in the cosmic world. Now, in the spiritual realm, that does not mean there will not be pressure because Christ himself, when he went to the cross, uh, shed tears and more. but it was, was not it's different than the stress and depression we're studying here depressed about your life stressed about what's going on <clears throat> what happens when you're in the spirit and you experience that the Holy Spirit carries the, the, the burden of it so it's not like we're out of it but this type of pressure and stress is so different. This is what burdens you, and we have it because things are not working out according in the world the way we want. Our husbands, our wives are not doing what we want. Society's not doing what we want. Work is not doing what we want. Things just aren't working. The, the, just the superficial example of it, some people get really stressed out just driving. People aren't doing what they want them to do, and you can't control them. And we've already seen how control is an illusion. But uh, uh, what we need to realize is if we just realize who we are in Christ and what really is important, there is no stress or depression. And we have moved now in our study. <clears throat> I, I, I do not apologize because I do want to just go through the list again just to kind of get you in that momentum of who you are in Christ. Because from the very first lesson, that very first lesson on New Year's Eve, don't tell me which year, but on a New Year's Eve, we started this series. And we talked about who you are in Christ is the answer. And now we're looking at who you are in Christ. One, you're not condemned. And I did, I put that one first because people who experience stress and depression have a great sense that they are unworthy to be loved, they are dirty, they are sinful. And often their Christian friends uh, make them feel this way, confirm these things. And so they just they, you get this great sins, this great guilt, this great sins of unworthiness. I'm unworthy to be loved and condemned by God. And that's not true. In Christ, you're not condemned. You are secondly justified. Thirdly, the flesh nature is not made better. It is crucified, buried and you are raised up with Christ, a new being, a new person. You are redeemed. You are reconciled by God to God. This is when what you are. People, don't be like the woman, and I use the woman because primarily it affects a woman, who looks in the mirror and she sees a very overweight woman when really she weighs about 90 pounds. But the, the reality, you can sit there and do all you want to do. You can show her pictures, talk to her, <clears throat> show her on a scale. doesn't matter. In her mind, she is overweight. And it's the same thing that happens to Christians. You get in your mind, I'm unworthy. And things aren't going my way. God doesn't love me. This isn't happening. But if you can see who and what you are in Christ, in truth, this is who you are. 
This is who you are. Six, you are propitiated before God. Seven, all your sins are taken care of on the cross. Past, present, and future sins. You are forgiven in Christ. In Jesus Christ, this is so beautiful for people who hurt. In Jesus Christ, you are brought near to God. Not because you are to deserve it. Not because you perform. But because of Jesus Christ, you are brought near to God. In Jesus Christ, you are an heir. An adopted child of God. In Christ, God has a plan for your life to the end of your life. You are a gift from God to His loved Son, Jesus Christ. You think He's going to give something that's unworthy to His Son? No. He gives a worthy gift. You're worthy. Claim what is yours. Thirteen, you are acceptable to God. I know people will make you feel like you're not. You'll think you're not, but you are acceptable to God. Fourteen, you are adopted as sons in Christ. Fifteen, you are a member of the kingdom of God, the kingdom of light, in this battle of two kingdoms. You're not in this world. Quit trying to de- define your self-worth in the kingdom of darkness. You're not citizens of the kingdom of darkness. You're not citizens of this kingdom. You're citizens of a heavenly kingdom. Do not look for your identity here and then become stressed out and depressed. Look for your identity and who you are in Christ. Sixteen, as a member of the heavenly kingdom, you're a royal priesthood. Seventeen, in Jesus Christ, you're a part of a chosen generation. In Jesus Christ, you are delivered from the powers of darkness. Number 18, and that's where we left off, and that's where we are. This one is extremely important. In Christ, you are delivered from the powers of darkness. Now, I've got to move on, but just remember, there are a lot of people who experience stress and depression, and they have a keen sense of the powers of darkness around them, and their friends think they're kind of weird. Well, God doesn't think you're weird, and I don't think you're weird. There is a power of darkness But the good news is, you are delivered from it. You are delivered from the power of darkness in Jesus Christ. And we've already looked at Colossians 2.13, so let's turn there, because that's where we left off. Let's look at Colossians chapter 2, a wonderful book, the book of Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Been talking with James more readily on the the, uh, telephone and... and, uh, we just, he's just very anxious that we get into having some time where we just sit down together and open up the text. Not really teaching, but just uh, talking about it and read through various books. All right, Colossians chapter, and Colossians would be a great one. Colossians chapter 2, verse 13. Verse 13. And when you were dead in your transgressions, now that's when you were an unbeliever, and the uncircumcision of your flesh, this is when you were an unbeliever, This is B.C., as it were, before Christ in your life. He, God the Father, made you alive. And He did this through the Holy Spirit. Together with Him. Now look what it says. Having forgiven us all our transgressions, past, present, and future. This is the cross. Having forgiven us all. Don't pass that up. All. All. Past, present, and future transgressions. Verse 14. Having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of decrees against us, which, uh, and which was hostile to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Verse 15. When, okay now, when, at the cross, he has disarmed, he, Jesus Christ, has disarmed the rulers and authorities. That refers to the powers of Darkness. This refers to the powers of darkness. He has disarmed the rulers and authorities. He made a public display of them, having triumphed triumphed over them through Him, that is, through Jesus Christ. Now, what's going on here? The best thing I can give you is that when Samson died, those of you who know the story of Samson, who died with Samson? Well, who died with Samson were the Philistines, because the whole the whole uh, uh, stadium where they were crumbled, and the Philistines were killed in it. When Jesus Christ hung on the cross, died on the cross, Satan was defeated. He was defeated, and not only that, you were buried with him, only to be raised up 
a new creation in Christ. And now you have been delivered from the powers of darkness. If you sense that your stress, anxiety, and depression has to do with the powers of darkness, God has delivered you from this domain. Claim what is yours. And a lot of people, there are people who experience stress and depression, and they talk about the powers of darkness, the heaviness of the night, and other people don't understand it. I understand it. God understands it. He's been victorious. Claim what is yours. How? How do you experience freedom from the powers of darkness? Let's open the text to to Ephesians. That wonderful book of Ephesians. Galatians and Ephesians, chapter 6. How do you experience freedom from the powers of darkness? Okay, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. We're just going to read through it kind of quickly here. Ephesians 6, 12. People, our struggle is not against flesh and blood. What does that mean? Our struggle is not in the flesh, not in the world. And yet how many Christians tonight are are stressed and depressed because of their living conditions, their marriage, their financial condition, their physical condition. People, I'm not minimizing these things. I am not minimizing these things, but I'm trying to help you get your eyes set on what really is important. And what really is important are not these things that that cause us to be so distressed. There are so many husbands and wives that fight each other. Fight each other. People are struggling not against flesh and blood. Look what it's against. But against the rulers, against the powers. These are the powers of darkness that we're talking about that you're delivered from. Against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness. This is the powers of darkness in this cosmic world against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly. In other words, uh, these these supernatural beings, demons, angels that uh, over around the earth and people that come to cause trouble and stress and depression on Christians' lives to keep you disoriented from God. Now, let's talk about that. We go back again to the most important book in the Bible, as far as I'm concerned. The first book written, that's Job. The first book written in the Bible is Job. And Job is going to reach a point. People, it is something to read what Job has to say. He says, I curse the day I was born. I wish that it had never come. I wish that my mother's womb had never opened. I, uh, I wish that I had died. I wish that I had never been born. He goes on and on and on. The pressure, the stress, the depression that was in that man. And that's in the first book, telling us something all the way through. And Job goes through 41 chapters of this thing. And he comes out on the end and he realizes what's really important. And what really is important is not any of these things related to this. It's in our relationship with God and who we are in reference to God. Verse 13. So verse, four, verse 12 is pr- crucial. For our struggle is not against the flesh and blood, but against the rulers and powers, against the power. Look, the powers of darkness, which we're seeing you have been set free. Against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, okay, now here's what I was saying to you. Claim what is yours, and how do you experience freedom from the powers of darkness? Here it is. Take up the full armor of God, that you may be able to resist the evil day. And having done everything, to do what? Just stand firm. People, you're not called to fight. We're studying on Tuesday night in the book of Jude. And we're studying a phrase where, where the archangel is in a battle with, with Satan over the body of Moses. And even he, even he, the archangel, does not revile Satan. He leaves him alone. Turns him over to God. People, your job is not to fight Satan. Your job is not to fight the powers of darkness. You stand firm in the truth. Stand firm, verse 14, therefore, having already girded your loins with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And when did that happen? At the point of salvation faith, when you believed in Christ as Savior. 
having sawed your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. In addition, now those things that happened at the point of salvation, in addition to all, taking up the shield of faith, walk by faith, experience what is yours, with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming missiles of the evil one. I'm here to tell you if you're suffering tonight from stress, anxiety, and depression, or whenever you listen to this on the internet or tapes, and you sense the power of darkness, you have been given victory over them. All you need to do is claim by faith who and what you are in Christ. Verse 17, And take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Just stay studying with a pastor who knows the truth and teaches the truth. This is what we need to do. Okay, Christ, acclaim what is yours. Live who you are in Christ. Live free of the powers of darkness by living, walking, by faith, in the Holy Spirit. People, there's only one power on planet Earth stronger and greater than the powers of darkness. And that's the power of the Holy Spirit. And where is the Holy Spirit? He's inside of you. There's only one power on all of planet Earth more powerful than the power of Satan and the powers of darkness on this Earth. And that power is inside of every believer. Most believers will never know it. They're walking around with this most unbelievable power and they never, ever tap into it. And they go through their life miserable, sad, stress, anxiety, depression, fighting, uh, so many things. Uh, the best, another way to analyze it where people... Illustrated where people grasp it real very quickly is it's like you having uh, ten million dollars in your bank account and and you struggle to pay a hundred dollar bill because you won't go to the bank and get it. You won't go get it. People, it's, you don't even have to go to the bank. It's in your soul. It's inside of you. The Holy Spirit. Claim what is yours. Yes, the powers of darkness can bring about circumstances that would result in stress, anxiety, and depression. You're right about that. You have now been given power over these powers of darkness. Claim what is yours. In the power of the Holy Spirit, the only power greater is in the Holy, is it the Holy Spirit who is in you. Okay, that brings us to point 19. Number 19 of who you are. Now we come to a powerful one that, that neutralizes one of your biggest problems. Now, what is one of the biggest problems we've been dealing with? Satan's lie. Now, what is Satan's lie? My self-worth is made up of my performance plus others' opinion of me. And there are preachers, that's the whole basis of their teaching, is your performance and other people's opinion of you. That is Satan's lie from the law, from the beginning, all the way through, from the book of Job, from the garden, all the way through. Now, here is what is going to neutralize that lie, if you will claim it. In Jesus Christ, you are free from the law. I am amazed at how many pastors and preachers still preach the law and find different ways of putting their people under the law. These are, Jude calls them, false teachers. You are no longer enslaved to the law, which means you are no longer to live under Satan's lie. People, this is a great freedom. You've been set free of the law. Don't let anyone put you back under the law. Please turn with me if you want to see it. Romans 7, verse 4. Romans 7, verse 4. You want to see it so you know that it's in the Bible. You have been set free. We're seeing how the false teachers who fill the pulpits of, of evangelical churches, who are on television, on radio, write books, and Christians just run to them, and they enslave people to the law. These are false teachers. And whether they would, they, well, there's no doubt, they would not admit to it. They actually increase immorality because they say what we need is more law, more law. The law increases sin. And so when you put somebody under the law, you increase sin and you kill them. Put people under the power of the Holy Spirit. You set them free from the law and you give them the power over sin. Let's take a look. Romans 7, 4. Therefore, my brethren, believers, you also were made to die to the law. You died to it through the body of Christ. 
When you were buried with Christ, we studied that, you were buried to the law. That you might be joined to one another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we might bear fruit for God, not by doing the law. I'm compelled to make this very clear. You never were under the law. You never were under the law. It is man who places himself under the law. It is man who chooses to live by the law. God never intended man to live by the law. He never gave the law. Uh, he gave. If you study Deuteronomy 5, it will clearly show you God gave the law to the Exodus rebellious generation who would not walk by faith so that it would drive them to faith. It is the Jews who when it came out, they kept it. But it was never given to the fathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It was given to the wilderness generation. God never intended us to live by the law. Never. What is the basic instinct of man? We're studying this in Jude because Jude talks about the basic instinct of man. And I'm sure that you've seen the uh, herd. No, nobody's seen it. Nobody. It made a lot of money, but nobody saw it. Uh, basic instincts. And the movie, if you remember it, the basic instincts, as far as the movie's concerned, is sex. It's not the basic instinct of man. The basic instinct of man is the law. Performance. Being rewarded for what you do. If you go and study Cain, you'll understand this. Or if you understand it, you'll understand Cain one way or the other. But we were never intended to live under the law. We choose to live under the law. It makes sense to the flesh. Oh, I've been bad, so I've got to be good. I've been bad, so I've got to make up for it and be good. That's the instinct of man. I've been bad, I've got to be punished. That's the instinct of man. The flesh, nature. That's not God. That's law, but it's not God. You don't get what you deserve from God. The cross, nobody got what they deserved. We all received salvation, eternal life. We didn't deserve it. We didn't earn it. We didn't perform for it. But man thinks he's got to earn and deserve things. That's why so many people fight salvation by a simple faith in Christ. No, 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 no. You see, you see, that's where you're wrong. It, it's not just by faith. You, you got to invite Jesus into your heart. You got to make Him Lord. You got to repent. You got to join a church. You got to commit your life. You've got to uh, change. You got to promise God you'll never do it again. And all this type of works performance stuff. It can't be. It, they say it cannot be just by faith. Because it just, it's against our basic instinct of our flesh. You can't just be given salvation by just simply believing in Christ. So they reject it. They don't want that. To live under law, natural instinct of man. As long as you keep your mind set on who you are in Christ, then you'll realize you've died to the law. It has no authority over you. You're dead to the law, joined with Jesus Christ. Now you're worthy to bear fruit for God. Look what it says. We may bear fruit for God. You're not going to bear fruit for God as long as you live under the law. As long as you live under performance standards and opinion of others, you're not going to bear fruit. You might do great good things as far as the world's concerned, as far as your church is concerned, but it's not bearing fruit for God. You're not going to as long as you live under the law. You're not going to. And I know many of you that are experiencing stress and depression, you don't think you're worthy to bear fruit for God. People, it's because you're looking at your performance. You're looking at what happened to you. Maybe when you were a little girl. Maybe when you were a little baby. Maybe when you were a little child and you were sexually abused. You were uh, physically abused as a little boy, a little girl. Or even in your marriages, in life, someone is abused and neglected and all these kinds of things and you feel dirty. I do not feel worthy to bear fruit. People, it's not up to you. God makes you worthy. You don't make yourself worthy. And don't let anybody, don't let the false teachers put you back under that. And many of your Christian friends will try to make sure you stay in a state of unworthiness. It makes them feel good to run down other Christians who sin that they don't like. But if you will not listen to them, and you will just listen to what God says about you, you're going to sense a great freedom from the law, you're joined with Christ, and you're worthy to bear fruit. So first, you're dead to the law. 
Got that now? Get in your mind. You're dead to the law. It has no authority over you. Another way of looking at this is another word. You are delivered from the law. Let's look at Romans 7, verse 6. Just cut the verses down. In verse 4, you are dead to it. Now look at verse 7. But now, we have been released. So you got two different ways. I want to make sure you get this. You're dead to it, and if that didn't communicate with you, you're released from the law. And again, I want to say, God never put you under it. Man put you under it as an unbeliever. Man put you under it when you go into religion. But you're released from the law, having died to the, to that by which you were bound. You're dead to it. Died to that which you were bound. You're released from that, from the law. And you died to it again, here repeated, so that, look what it says, you've died to it, you've been released of it, so that you can serve in newness of the Holy Spirit. People, let me just assure you, you cannot serve God and live under the law. You cannot serve God and live under Satan's lie, performance and trying to appease others' opinion of you. You will not. You may do be the head deacon in the church. You may be the preacher. You may be uh, the great person and everybody admires you. You're doing it all in the flesh. You're living by the law just like Job did. Job 1.1, we'll study this after we finish our study of stress, anxiety, depression. We're going to study the book of Job in this series. You might want to keep up with it. Because everyone praises Job because of Job 1.1. Talks about how he ran from evil, he was a wonderful man, and all of this. People, that's Job's problem. Job thinks his relationship with God is his performance. He has to go through all the things Job will go through to learn one thing. You don't perform for God, you just trust Him. Look what he had to go through. And many Christians are in the same boat that Job is in. The same boat. But now, verse 6, but now we have been released from the law. So don't let a preacher put you back under it. Don't let your Christian friends put you back under it. You've been released. God's released you from it. Having died to that by which you were bound, so that we may serve in the newness of the Spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. The letter refers to the law. Release from the law. The King James translates the Greek word delivered from the law. The Greek word means to be released or delivered. It means to have cease having it, uh, its power over you. Now what's important here, another thing important, not only the Greek word meaning to be released or delivered, it's an aorist, passive, indicative. Now, when people hurt, like some of you are listening to this now in the internet or tapes, you don't have time you, you don't have, you don't want to think about the, the technicality of the Greek. And I, I have not taken you there very much. But you, you should start coming out of that now. If you start believing who you are in Christ and you can start seeing some rich things here. Let me just share with you about this verse. You have been released or delivered. It's in the arrow's tense. An arrow's tense in the Greek, what that does for you, it takes a point in time in your life when you were released. And when is that? Point of faith in Christ. Now, I want to explain why. Why at that point were you released from the law? Because before that point of time, you function in the flesh, and the natural instinct of the flesh is to be under the law. So, you, the flesh person dies, you're a new person in Christ, that new person in Christ has nothing to do with the law. And the law has nothing to do with them. So, that's why you're delivered and set free at that point. Now, also, the Greek of this verb is what is called the passive voice. Now, why do I point that out? This is beautiful. You receive this. You do not earn it or perform for it. You didn't do anything to be released from the law. Passive voice is what is called a grace voice here. You do not do something to free yourself from the law. You graciously receive this deliverance the moment you believed in Jesus Christ as Savior. It's grace voice. Passive. Passive. You know, a lot of people have trouble with the word faith. Is it a work? Is it not a work? Is it doing what? People that want to fight it. Let me tell you about the word. 
And, and they say, well, you're splitting hairs. Preacher, you're just splitting hairs, Herman, when you say that people who say invite Jesus into your heart, make him Lord, that, that they're wrong and that they're le- going the wrong way and all that. You're just splitting hairs. People, let me explain to you why I'm not splitting hairs. And I hope every one of you can understand this just from your basic uh, elementary English, English you had in the first through sixth grade. To invite is an active verb. By that I mean you do something. I invite you, I do something. I make him Lord, I do something. Making him Lord is an active verb. Active, you do, it's an action. Faith is a passive verb. You receive. You don't do anything. By faith we receive from God. If I, if, if I tell you that you do something to be saved and invite Jesus into your heart, people, I know that sounds so wonderful. Doesn't that sound just so, oh, so wonderful? You invited Jesus. Invite Jesus to come into your heart, brother. And, and it just sounds good. But let me tell you what's happening in my mind without realizing it. I'm doing something. It's up to me. I have to make the initiative here. People, you don't make the initiative. He makes the initiative. You just receive it. It changes your whole perspective of how you're saved and that's going to change your whole perspective of how you live. If you're off by just a, a little grain of a mustard seed and, and understanding how you're saved, that's going to blossom into a big tree in living the Christian life. If you think, just a li- I just did a little bit, I just invited him into my heart, it's going to blossom into now you've got to do things for God for a blessing. You've got to do things for God when you sin. You've got to do, what do I do? I invited him into my heart. I made him Lord. I joined the church. I committed to him. I did this. Now that I'm a Christian, what do I do? That's why it's hard for a lot of Christians to understand. All I did to be saved was I received salvation by faith. Therefore, how am I going to live? Receive by faith. Not by my works. All people, if you're suffering from stress and depression, it's because you've been living under a lie. You've been trying to perform. You're looking for your own worth in your performance. You're looking for your own worth the way people think about you. The way people treat you. You're looking for your worth and all these things. It's not there. And let me me add, I know that stuff. Because we live with people. We live with one another. We're not an island ourselves. That's why I encourage you to, to gather around Christians who understand the truth. While you're going through your stress and depression, stay away from Christians like Job's three friends. Job's three friends. Job ended up, people, I've showed you before, but let me just remind you. Job ended up crying to his three friends. Why do you crush my soul with your words? Why are you doing this to me? You're my friends. That's what Christians do. So this is a passive voice. We receive being delivered from the law by grace. You do not do anything for it. The indicative mood is important here. The indicative mood is the mood of reality. People, you are in reality delivered from the law. Now, I want you to hold your place. I don't have it in my notes. But right now I want to show you. Look at Galatians. Go back from Ephesians. Back toward the front. Go to Galatians. I'm going to show you chapter 5, verse 1. Maybe it will make sense to you now. Vividly. Not just scriptural study, but vividly. Let's see if we can grasp chapter 5, verse 1. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Freedom from the law. It was for freedom from the law that Christ set us free from the law. Therefore, keep standing firm. Now, I thought I was supposed to advance in the Christian life. You stand firm in that freedom. Now, look what he says. This is important. Do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery. Don't put yourself back under the law. Don't put yourself back under Satan's lie. Don't let a preacher do it. Don't let a church do it. Don't let a Christian do it. Don't let anyone do it. You stay free in Christ. 
You stay free. And you'll watch stress, anxiety, and depression just move away. As an unbeliever, the flesh was bound to the law naturally. Do you understand that? Not by some type of decision that it made, but it was a natural thing to do the law. I deserve to be punished. I deserve not to be loved. I've got to be good. I've got to perform. What everyone thinks about me. But you've been set free. You've been set free. Look what it says. Now, the next phrase is extremely important in your freedom from stress, anxiety, and depression. We're back at Romans 7, 6. Look what it says now. So that, but now you have been delivered, released. Arrows tense, point of faith in Christ. Passive voice, you received it. You didn't earn or deserve it. It did not perform for it. The indicative mood, reality, this is your state. Having died, this is how it happened. So that, by which we were bound... We were bound so that we may serve in newness of the Spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. That is the law. Believe if you'd see, just see this and just believe this and then live it. You're no longer live under the law. Satan's lie. But you would live in the domain of the Holy Spirit of God. Now, let's put the whole thing together. Let's put the three verses together and and note the verse that we did not read in between the two. Okay. Noting that you are, you've dead, died to the law, and you've been delivered from the law. Verse 4. Therefore, my brethren, you also were made to die to the law through the body of Christ that you might be joined to another, to him who was raised from the dead, that we might bear fruit for God. For while you were in the flesh, the sinful passions which were aroused by the law. People, that's what the law is designed to do. It's designed to increase sin. Romans tells you that. It's designed to kill. We're at work in the members of our body to bear fruit for death. Natural instincts of the flesh to do the law. Sin and the law. Natural instincts, sin and law. Sin? Oh, I've got to go to the law now. I've done wrong. Oh, I just have a great sin. And a lot of people even use it. Oh, you have this great sense of guilt. See, that's your conscience. and that's it. People, that's the flesh. Unbelievers have great sense of guilt. Haven't you ever met an unbeliever who's just so, so sorry? So sorry. And they are. They mean it. I'm not making fun of them. They've murdered. They've lied. They've cheated. They've hurt somebody. They've hurt their husband. They've hurt their wife. They've hurt their family. And they truly are sorry about it. And they they just sense their unworthiness. It's natural. Verse 6. But now we have been released. You've been set free from all of that bondage stuff. From the law, having died to that which we were bound, so that we may serve in the newness of the Holy Spirit. You cannot be under law and under the Holy Spirit at the same time. Just get that in your mind. If you're under the law, you're not under the Holy Spirit. If you're under the Holy Spirit, you're not under the law. Please look with me at Romans 6.14. Let's look at Romans 6.14, verse 14 here. Let's take a look. Go back one chapter. Look at verse 14. For sin shall not be master over you. We'll see later how you were set free from the power of sin, but that's not our study right now. Right now we're seeing how you're set free of the law. For sin shall not be master over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, without going into deep theology at at seminary and and battling this all out, I, I hope you can see the correlation. There's something between being master over sin and not being under the law. Can, can, you, can you get that in your mind? I know you're hurting probably tonight if you're listening sometime. People listen to these things. But just think for a moment. There's a correlation here. There's a correlation between sin not being master and you not being under the law. People, if you're under the law, it's designed to increase sin. Get out from underneath the law. Get under grace. Look at this. 
Sit still. Just, just wherever you are, when you're listening, let the Holy Spirit anchor this into your tormented soul. You're not under the law. Look at the phrase. I didn't write this. The Holy Spirit did. You are not under law. I don't know how you can make it any clearer. And yet preachers preach law. Making a big deal of the Ten Commandments up here in Alabama or somewhere. And Christians are all upset. The Ten Commandments are the great symbol of Christianity. Oh, God, how horrible. People, the Ten Commandments are not the symbol of Christianity. If we have a symbol, let it be the cross. But even that begs. Let it be an empty tomb. That's even better. But this idea, boy, the law, oh, that's what Christ is about. That's what God is about. Let's keep our children under the law. Oh, we're doing such evil. And everybody praises these preachers that preach all this stuff and want to get all upset about it. Not me. People, you're not under the law. Look at the phrase, not under the law. Let's take that, that statue of those Ten Commandments and just give me a sledgehammer. I'll go there and break it up. I'm a preacher. I'll break it up. I'll do it. It's an abomination that this is what Christianity is about. It's not what it's about. Christians just rally around the law instead of around grace. You are not under law. That's what it says. Do not allow preachers, false teachers, Christians, keep you under the authority of the law, making it a symbol of Christianity. What a disaster. People that plays... For, let me tell you something strongly. That plays right into Satan's hands. Satan is loving all this stuff going on about the Ten Commandments and all the preachers making everything, making it a big symbol of Christianity. Satan's loving it. And these same preachers would revile Satan. Oh, Satan's evil and Satan's your enemy. Satan's horrible. He's the enemy of God. While at the same time, they're doing his work for him. That's what Jude says. False teachers will just revile Satan while doing his work. They don't even know what they're doing. Don't even know what they're doing. Look at the last phrase. You're under grace. You're under grace. You're not under the performance trap of the law. You're not under Satan's lie. You are under grace. I know you're sad. Stress, anxiety, depression. But we're very close to coming to an end of all of that in your life. We're going to end it going to set you free if you'll believe and live who you are in Christ. These verses make it very clear. If you'll see them, let the Holy Spirit open your eyes. You have been delivered from the law. You've been delivered from Satan's lie of performance. If you'll believe who you are in Christ. But, and here's the real hurt and the real problem. You can put yourself right back under the law. You can that's why Christ said in Galatians 5.1, remember we read Galatians 5.1, what did it say? Do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. People, you can do this. You can put yourself right back under the law. Now let me give you an example that Paul gives in Romans. Romans relates it to a marriage. In the first marriage and the woman, because we're the responders to Christ, woman's a responder. In the first marriage, the woman's married to the law. Okay. She accepts Christ as Savior, so that's like being married to Christ now, so she's divorced from the law. The law has, just like an ex-husband, has no authority, no authority, no authority, no power, no influence over your life. It's her new husband, Jesus Christ, who treats her in grace and love. But what does the woman do? Here comes the ex-husband, coming back, knocking on the door, and lures her away. And gets her in bed. Now, he doesn't really care about the woman. He just wants to embarrass the new husband. He wants to embarrass Christ. But what does he get us to do? He gets us to go back under the law. Why don't you come back under the law? Yeah, 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 you're a Christian, but now you want to be good for God. Now you want to work hard for God. Now you want to do all these things for God. You want to obey God. And so we go right back into the bed with our ex-husband. And we get right in bed with her. We go back into the slavery. We go back into the bondage again. 
That's why Christ said, do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. When you go back to the law, you have taken yourself right out of grace, back into slavery. And I want to tell you something, and I'm not being cold or insensitive, I'm just telling you, that's why you're suffering stress and depression. Because you've taken yourself out of grace, put yourself under the law, back under performance. Christ has set you free. He set you free for the rest of your life. Claim it. Start living it right now. You put yourself back under the law, back under performance, back under Satan's lie, and yes, stress and anxiety and depression will come to it, or you can remain free of the law. It was for freedom that Christ set you free. There's that freedom again, freedom from the law. Do not be subject again. How do we stand firm in freedom? That's a good question. If you're thinking about this, well, how do I do that? Okay, I'm sitting here hurting. My, I'm really sad about my life and, and depressed about my life. And I'm hearing what you're saying. No longer under the, the performance trap. Uh, but, but how? How do I stand in that freedom? Okay, I'm glad you asked. I heard you asked. I'm glad you asked. Now let me answer it. Second Corinthians 3. Find Second Corinthians. We'll put two powerful verses together. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. Second Corinthians chapter 3. Look with me at verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit. See the word now? Now that you're saved. Now that you've been set free. Christ has set you free. See that word now? You've been set free from the law. From the power of sin. Many other things, but we're dealing with the law. Set you free. Now that you've been set free, the Lord is the Holy Spirit. Your Lord is the Holy Spirit. See, this whole thing of lordship of Jesus Christ. People, Jesus Christ is your Lord, but don't let them take away the lordship of the Holy Spirit from you. Don't let them take away the lordship of God the Father. I can show you verses where God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit are all your Lord. And I'm going to word it this way because I hope it kind of pings your soul a little bit. Ooh, can he do, does he dare say that? There are many Christians who get bogged down in the Lordship of Christ. They never move to the Lordship of God the Father. They never move into a relationship with God the Father. People, your first, if you want to look at it this way, that your first Lord is the Holy Spirit. Look what it says. Now the Lord is the Spirit. He will take you to your next Lord, that's Jesus Christ, who will take you to the one greater than Him, and that's the Father. That's what we want to get. Is a relationship with the Father. Few Christians have an intimacy with God the Father. Very few. Okay. Now the Lord is a Spirit. Now look what it says. So you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. He's your Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is da, 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 liberty. You walk in the power of the Spirit. You're not under the law. You're set free of it. How do you stand still in your freedom and yet live and continue to advance spiritually? By walking by faith in the Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ was sent by God to set us free. You receive that freedom by faith in Jesus Christ. Now God the Father has sent the Holy Spirit so that we can live in freedom. And you live under that freedom the same way you entered into it, by faith. If you clearly understand how you were set free, you're going to clearly understand how to remain free and live it. You were set free by faith, receiving it. You're going to live by faith, receiving it from the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why He was sent. You desire to live free of the law, free of Satan's lie, free of the performance trap, free of stress, anxiety, and depression? Well, walk by faith in the Holy Spirit, moment by moment. Live who you are in Jesus Christ. Live who you are in Jesus Christ by living by faith in the Holy Spirit and liberty. And people, there's going to come, watch what's going to start happening. I know you want to take a tablet, a drink, a drug, because it just sort of numbs everything out. People, what God gives you keeps you alive. Makes you a participant in this whole thing. You enjoy it. You enjoy what's going on. And instead of stress and depression, you're going to have inner happiness and inner peace. You're going to have love, joy, happiness. A lot of wonderful things. All by His grace, mercy, kindness, compassion. You're going to be free, stress, anxiety, and depression. Now that brings us to the 20th one. And um, 
It's just so much, and I, I, I could get started and then go right back over it. So let's begin with the 20th one next uh, Tuesday or Wednesday evening, and we'll just begin right there. Next week, I'll put a little mark, and we'll begin with number 20 next week. Let's close in a word of prayer. Wow. Heavenly Father, you have provided everything necessary that we do not have to live in stress and depression. And yet we do. And yet we become so distressed and pressed about things. Pray, Father, that you take the, your spirit will take the things we've seen, make them real in our souls of who we are in Christ. And if the things of the world are just not worth the SAD that we put ourselves under, that it is much better to enjoy the freedom that we have in Christ by walking in the Spirit. We praise you, Father, for the God that you are and the grace that you give. In your Son's precious name, amen.